NHS staff and care workers who come from outside the EU will not, after all, have to pay a surcharge for the right to use the health service. Barely 24 hours after the Prime Minister told MPs that the fee had to stay, the policy was abruptly reversed. A group of Conservative MPs had joined opposition parties in calling for the £400 a year surcharge to be dropped. Boris Johnson, who has acknowledged that he owes his life to NHS staff from overseas, said yesterday it would be very difficult to find alternative sources of income. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, said that the about turn was a victory for common decency. Our correspondent, Jessica Parker, has this report. The Prime Minister clapping for carers tonight. After accusations, it could have looked like an empty gesture. He had rejected a call to exempt overseas health and care workers from an extra charge that goes towards the health service. Then, at the Downing Street press briefing, the U-turn. The Prime Minister has asked the Home Secretary and I to work on how we can remove NHS and care workers from the NHS surcharge as soon as possible. We've talked many times during this, um, during this crisis about the enormous contribution that people from overseas uh, make to the NHS uh, and to uh, social care. Prime Minister! Yesterday, the Prime Minister said he'd thought about the issue a great deal. Hospitalised with coronavirus, care workers had recently saved his life. But... We must look at the realities that this is a, a, a great national service, it's a national institution, it needs funding. The surcharge that's on top of normal taxation is currently paid by non-EU workers from abroad. It'll rise to more than £600 a year in October. But for social care workers, health workers and NHS staff, including porters, cleaners, a burden now lifted. The Pandy family say they're set to save nearly £2,500 a year. We have to uh, collect certain amount of money uh, and keep it aside just for NHS surcharge. And, uh, and we have to pay in advance. So, so it is a huge relief for us now. Labour said that you can't clap for carers one day and then charge them extra to use the NHS the next. He's been challenged. I asked the Prime Minister to reconsider. He's done that, he's U-turned. This is a good thing, a victory for common sense. But it wasn't just opposition parties and unions calling for a change of course. There were rumblings too, some of them public, from Conservative MPs. A warning that the government may begin to look mean-spirited. Perhaps a fear too that ministers might be at odds with the public mood. A country showing its gratitude each week for those fighting the virus on the front line. Jessica Parker, BBC News. Well, health and care workers in England, along with hospital patients and care home residents throughout the UK, will be among the first to be tested for coronavirus antibodies from next week. The test will show if someone has already had the virus. But the NHS Confederation has warned of severe consequences for staff and patients if the right system for tracking and tracing is not established very quickly. Now, the latest figures show the number of deaths reported in the last 24-hour period has risen by 338. And that brings the total number of people in the UK whose deaths are directly linked to coronavirus to 36,042. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, has the latest for us. Yep, sharp scratch. It's a test which can tell you whether you've already had coronavirus and whether you might have immunity. And that's important for someone needing to know whether it's relatively safe to go into work. The test, which looks for antibodies in the bloodstream, is going to be made available from next week to tens of thousands of NHS and care workers and patients every day. We're developing this critical science to know the impact of a positive antibody test and to develop the systems of certification to ensure people who have positive antibodies can be given assurance about what they can safely do. Antibody testing is already being used in a study to find out how many people have had the virus. 17% in London and 5% elsewhere in England, with the capital having seen rising case numbers early on. Another part of the testing jigsaw is finding out who currently has the virus. Nasal and throat swabs are taken and sent off to labs. The government target to provide 100,000 tests a day was met yesterday. But of the total, just over 63,400 were carried out at drive-through centres or hospitals, 
More than 41,000 were test kits sent out to individuals and care homes, and around 23,800 were for research and surveillance. It was frustrating. Some key workers like Ludmila, who works in a care home, say they're struggling to get tested. She had to get a lift for a long drive to a test centre after she couldn't book a home test kit. It would always come up that home testing kits were unavailable. There was also no mobile uh, testing when people come to you, to your home to test you. So nothing like this. The only option is to drive. So if you're not don't drive, you're basically stuck. Widespread testing and then tracing people who might have been infected by those who tested positive is seen as essential if any future spread of the virus is to be curbed, but it's a complex process. Here's how contact tracing should work. If I test positive for the virus, I'd be contacted by officials by phone or email and asked who I'd met up with in recent days. And that means meetings at less than two metres, face to face, not someone I might have bumped into in a shop. That might include, for example, friends I'd spent time with and work colleagues I might have been in meetings with or a wider circle of recent contacts. All that would then be assessed by a clinical team and those people might be contacted and told to self-isolate for 14 days. There'll also be a mobile phone app to help the tracing process. The Prime Minister says the full system will be in place by early June, but some health leaders are sceptical. I'm less concerned about a June 1st date. The question is, have we actually got an effective system in place and we don't introduce further lockdown measures until we're absolutely sure that that system works effectively? For NHS staff, there's now a trial of a fast action test with results coming back in 20 minutes. It can be done on site without having to send samples to labs. It's another step in the wide-ranging attempt to get to a comprehensive testing and tracking strategy. Hugh Pym, BBC News.